So I'm here to talk about what kind of what Perkin Elmer offers in terms of kind of the life sciences solutions that work with Transmart in addition to um, Transmart itself. Um, to start off, um, you know, Transmart solves like a part of the problem we think about in translational science and translational medicine. And when I think about some of the big challenges in, in kind of data science and with life sciences data, um, variety, complexity, and the volume of data is kind of one side of the coin where you think about um, the fact that we've got all this clinical trial data coming in that was all collected in different formats. They were all collected because a clinical trial was run a certain way and they need to collect that data for a specific reason. But now we're trying to use that data for something else. So the data always looks different. Um, you've got complexity of the data, um, you know, from VCF data and genomic data, high dimensional data, clinical data. Um, it all looks different, but it's all also uniquely complex. And then the volume of data. Um, we haven't talked a lot about that today, but there was a, a conversation earlier where they were talking about I2B2 and the fact that, you know, they look at a small um, instance of I2B2 has 200,000 patients worth of data in the system. And we're nowhere near that with Transmart yet. But that is somewhere we will need to, we will need to go there. Um, so how do we address those kind of uh, concerns? But then kind of the other side of the coin is how people work in translational medicine and overall. Um, you know, I think right now people are still working in isolation. There's not much collaboration. And there isn't all the infrastructure to support everything in place today. I mean, when I go to an organization, um, and a lot of the people who are in this room and a lot of people, you know, at this conference overall have kind of solved for, I think, the infrastructure and some of the collaboration issues with Transmart because those do solve some of those problems. But, you know, it doesn't solve all the problems. Uh, you know, we can share cohorts. Um, you know, the example of C-BioPortal and sharing that link to, so you can share uh, a specific uh, piece of information, those things are, are getting better, but we're still not there yet. Um, in a lot of cases, you know, particularly in, in big pharma organizations, you know, a bioinformaticist gets a request to uh, perform some sort of analysis, and they end up doing that entire um, analysis on their laptop, on their desktop, whatever it is, in isolation from everyone else, and then once that's done, it can't be reused again. It's used for that particular purpose, and then it gets filed away somewhere and no one ever sees it again. So the idea is to put the infrastructure in place so that you can enable more sharing across these types of things and enable reuse of these types of analytics, which I think, like I said, Transmart does a lot uh, as far as all that's concerned as well. But it's not the whole picture. So when I think about what we're trying to offer, you know, kind of the community, not just Transmart, but the entire life sciences community, is really kind of shift the effort. So when I think about where the effort is today, this red curve really represents kind of where we are today, which means we spend a lot of time on data collection and curation. And we don't have as much time to spend on the analysis and insights because there's only so much time to go around. And the whole idea of everything we're trying to do, and I think Transmart, again, addresses this as well, um, is to kind of shift that curve so that we can focus less on the curation and collection efforts and then move into the analytics and the insights so we can actually spend more time on those activities because those are typically higher value activities within an organization. You know, it's great to have all the data aggregated and put together, but unless you can find something useful about the data, it doesn't really do you any good. So this is where our offerings come into play. And one of the things I'll talk about today is, is our, our signals platform which we really look at um, Spotfire with Elasticsearch, and then beneath that, a Hadoop and Spark um, infrastructure back layer for kind of data storage. Um, but that's actually not the focus of what I'll be talking about today. Some of the other things we have in place are looking at the open source connectors. So we have a connector to Transmart directly to Spotfire using the RESTful API. So we can take that data directly out of Transmart and bring it right into Spotfire. Um, <coughs> In addition, we're actually building some analytics in Spotfire. Uh, we've started a new project called the, the Spotfire App Store, which I think one of the issues in the past about Spotfire has been there's just an overwhelming number of things you can do there. Just like if you're an R programmer or a SAS programmer, it's kind of a blank slate. Um, we're trying to um, enable a little bit more, I'm not going to say guided analytics, but a little bit more user-friendly ways to kind of to go through your analytics and create your analytic pipelines. And I'll show that in a little bit um, more detail later today. The other thing we have here, which I think is something we haven't really addressed much. I haven't heard much about this um, since I've been at this conference, but it's something I've talked about and heard about um, quite a bit, which is kind of 
finding your data. And this is where we have uh, Signals Perspectives, which is uh, we've actually partnered with a company called Intivio to offer Signals Perspectives. And with that, what I really look at the value there is when I mentioned those, those big data problems that I had, if, if I'm a, a big pharma company with 100,000 studies, well, how do I pick the studies that I want to actually load into Transmart first? Like, where do I find them? Where, you know, how do I identify which are the ones that are going to be interesting? And what Ativio will allow you to do is identify those data sources and kind of bring them together so you can start to get a, a clearer picture of what data you have. So then you can figure out, well, which data do I want to take the next step, bring it into something like Transmart, bring it into something like Signals, and then move it on to your analytic layers like Spotfire or other sorts of analytics. Um, so when I think about all this, there's a bunch of steps in the process of kind of get, collecting all your data, analyzing your data, and bringing it out um, to actually get all the information. So the Ativio solution I just mentioned, the perspectives, kind of looks at the first three of these, the, the cataloging data, identification of data, um, and unification of data. So I'll talk about that first, and then we'll talk a little bit more about some of the analytics with Spotfire and what that can do as well. Um, so the first thing is to unify your data and, and to bring it together. So you know you've got data from all sorts of different sources. You know, if, you know most of us are dealing with clinical trial data, but we've talked a little bit about um, EMR data. Um, there's also real-world evidence data, which I don't think is too far away from what we're working with today. Um, you know, you've got claims data, you've got imaging data, you've got genomic data. Bringing all that data together and identifying what are the common elements. So one of the things that um, Ativia will, will do is it actually will kind of spider out amongst your data sets and find some of the common, um, common trends within the data. So if, if you want to look for maybe all of my um, clinical trials in a specific therapeutic area, it'll help you identify where those are and what, what um, clinical trials are available to you for that. Or if you're looking for um, data that has um, genomic data attached to it or some other types of information, you can start to catalog your data and figure out, well, what type of data do I have and where does it sit? and what's available to me. So then you can actually make the next decision of, well, okay, well, now how do I, how do I work with that data? Um, so in that process of kind of spidering out and finding all the different data, the other thing you can do with the TIVU is do um, some metadata extraction. And that metadata can be useful when, you know, uh, loading into Transmart or loading into some other uh, tool for use of, of searching and actually finding um, subsets of data within that. So. Uh, using that metadata to figure out kind of more information about the data sets that you have available and identify where they're, um, where they link together. And then the last piece of kind of what it does, um, actually, I think I skipped this, I meant to go to here, um, is it brings that data together and it can even create a virtual data model for you uh, of kind of how you want to organize your data. Um, so when you put all that together, um, it does a lot of the work for you in terms of collecting your data, a little bit of the curation of your data. But I would say when I think about that curve that I showed at the beginning, collection was kind of step one. And I think that's where Ativio really comes into play to talk about how do we collect the data and get it ready. And it does, I would say, you know, the first couple of steps of maybe that curation. I think Elevada had a, a presentation about their curator tool that can help with that as well. That's probably the next step in the process. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of manual tools for that as well. People use Excel and other sorts of things. I don't think that's all going to go away. I think there's going to be tools out there that will help, but, um, you know, it's all part of that entire process of bringing the data together. So then the other kind of half of this is once we've unified the data, how do we provision the data for analytics? We've gotten it all together. We've kind of understood where it is and what data is there. But now, how do I find a cohort in the data, which is, again, one of the things Transmark can do. And then once I've done that, how do I bring that data into an analytic platform to actually start working with it more closely and get to my insights more quickly? So in doing that, you know, we think about the, the workflow that uh, translational scientists go through. And I kind of alluded this to the start was, you know, we're starting with data that's designed and collected for a different purpose. Um, just like when we talked about today, or earlier, someone was mentioning that EMR data was designed to be collected for billing. 
you know, a lot of clinical trial data was designed to look for a specific outcome or a specific adverse event or those sorts of things associated with that trial. But then when you try to apply that to something else, the data looks differently. So, you know, you start with the raw data, you do your data processing, and you do all this sorts of thing with that first intention in mind, but then you get to a point where now I've got to use that data for something else, and you kind of move that forward, and you're looking at collecting the possibly more samples, more getting more subjects, processing that data, getting to secondary results, and kind of going through that process. So, you know, step one is that collection and, and kind of curation piece, and then we move on to the cohort selection, and then finally you get out to the analytic layer. Um, so one of the things we have is our um, signals for translational, which is part of that um, aggregation layer for all the data, and it can bring all that data together. Um, so taking in all those various types of data, and the idea is it's, it's flexible, so you can bring in many different types of data. You can automate the, the process of getting the data in through APIs and scripts of, of actually loading the data. And then it, it's domain specific. It's not um, a tool that's designed to be generic outside of life sciences. It's designed to work within life sciences and to have the, the content there. Um, so that's kind of another piece of it. <laughs> And again, it's one of the tools we offer, but it wasn't one of the ones I wanted to focus on. I just wanted to make sure people were aware of it. Um, the, the real pieces I wanted to talk about were, one was what I showed earlier about, what I talked about earlier was Ativio, but then the other is what I'm going to show is a, a short video here, and I'll, I'll talk through it as I, as I go through the video. But this is the concept of the App Store um, that I was talking about. And what you're looking at here is actually our dashboard in Spotfire that connects to signals. But what's more important is about 30 seconds into the video, you'll start to see, um, oops, you'll start to see uh, how the uh, how the App Store kind of works. And then after this, I'll get into a live demo of the Transmart connector. So what's happening here to start on the left-hand side is they're selecting a cohort, and they're actually going through with data that's been loaded in the system, and they're selecting a cohort. And you can see the Spotfire template kind of um, updating automatically with the information that's associated with it. Um, and then what they're doing is they're going to move on to the, the Signals App Store. And from here, we've categorized this, and we've got high content screening is another area we're focusing on. So we have a number of various apps that are associated with high content screening. And in this case, we'll look at some of the translational apps. And you can see a list of some of the ones we have out of the box now. And that library continues to grow. Um, so the idea is you can now select one of these particular apps and apply that to the data that you've loaded into, into Spotfire. So once you've done that, it allows you to kind of, there's some, in this particular example, there's a few other details you can get into. And then you actually start to build out this guided workflow here of, of these various apps. And what you can end up doing is you can end up threading these apps together. So the output of one goes as the input of the next and so on. So what it allows you to do is break down some of these complex templates that, that require lots of different analytics and bring them to something that's um, much simpler uh, from that perspective and allowing someone, maybe a biologist or someone who doesn't have the, you know, the informaticist um, level of, of kind of experience, the ability to start to do this. Um, I know there's dangers in that because you still want to have the informaticist bless this work and, and kind of look at it and to make sure it's accurate and those sorts of things. And we don't, I'm not expecting that we would ever replace that effort. But the idea is that you can put a little bit more in the hands of the biologists so they're not quite so reliant on the informaticist for that work because that tends to be a rate limiting step, I find, in, uh, in a lot of this work that actually happens. So what you can see here is just in this app, it created a, a number of visualizations there and then moved on to another one here where we're actually looking at the PCA and, and starting to do s some more work here as well. Um, and again, you know, we built this template so that the app can actually work on the data um, as it's brought into um, signals pretty natively. So from that perspective, um, you know, it, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to, to start to create these types of visualizations and these types of analytics based on the data once it's brought into the system. And then once it kind of it finishes going through all this, you can actually save that particular workflow or, or that, uh, that series of apps that you put together as a protocol or as whatever you want to call it um, so that it can be reused again and applied to another data set 
or you can use it for the same data set again or whatever you might need to do. Um, you can reuse that and share that information with others. Um, so, and obviously there's a lot of detail in what, uh, what's going on in this particular app. You know, he's selecting his cohorts and you can start to see some of the power of Spotfire here too, where maybe we've gotten to a point where we've selected a cohort in Transmart and brought that in here, but now in, in the purpose of the, of the app here, we've identified a small subset even within that that we want to look at in a little more detail or that we want to separate out, and that's all possible within Spotfire as well. So I'm actually going to stop the video for a second now. I think it's actually gone on long enough. Uh, it's about a four-minute video. Um, so that's the, the basic concept of kind of what the, uh, the App Store is. Um, the last piece is really probably what most of you are probably more interested in is the uh, Transmart connector for Spotfire and kind of how that fits into play. And I look at that as the, the last section of this um, where you're really just provisioning your data for analytics. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show a quick demo of this. So I've opened up Spotfire here, and if I come up on the upper left here, I can just open this directly from a Transmart data source. And I already have my URL in here, thanks to the Hive for setting up that particular data source for us. So this is a, uh, uh, an instance of Transmart that they have available. And it just takes a few seconds for it to actually um, uh, to, to bring up. But once you've got it, you can see your entire list of studies that are actually loaded into the system, just as you would in Transmart. And I, if I select the one here, I can see the, uh, the various uh, elements of the, the tree here. And I can navigate that the same way as I would in, in Transmart. Um, and I can even get down to uh, the genomic data as well. Um, so when I get to the genomic data, and if I actually select that, that data here, it gives me a few different options that I can look at for the types of data. And it's a little small to read, but uh, the top says all observations, and then the other ones are the various uh, files associated with the genomic data. Just for the purposes of the demo, because it, uh, the genomic files are larger, um, I'm just going to grab the all observations data. And what that does is it, br it brings all that data directly into Transmart, just kind of at a click of a button. And then the next step would be, you know, applying various analytics to that, um, that particular set. Since I just brought this in, um, I haven't actually um, created the template on this data set. So I'm going to show you the, uh, what the other types of templates we can do in Spotfire with some of these types of data. Um, so what you're looking at here is, a review, is a, an overview of some clinical data where you can see the various vo box plots, you can see s some other information associated with it. Um, and the idea here is just to see what are the types of things you can see. Um, so looking here, I've got adverse event data. I can look at the frequency of adverse event data across a particular population. Um, I've got pharmacogenomic data in here as well. And if I want to filter this down further, um, maybe if I want to um, pull away some of, the, some of the items here, and I think that's what I want. Um, I can do a lot of filtering as far as the data is concerned to actually get down to um, a smaller cohort if I want. The other thing I can do as well on these, um, if I was looking at the adverse event data, let's just say I wanted to create a cohort where I can compare two cohorts. Um, I can grab any one of these uh, and select that group and set it as a cohort itself. So now what it will do is it will actually compare that cohort to anyone else in the system. So now if you look at these various graphics, um, it actually separates it out so you can see cohort one at the top and you see co the untagged elements at the bottom and you can see that across all the various visualizations. Um, you know, these are just examples of the types of analytics you can do. Um, you know, I've got, I'm looking at labs, I've got flow cytometry data, um, cytokine data, which is interesting as well. So there's a number of different types of things you can do with the analytics in Spotfire. But the idea is by leveraging that Transmart connector to get that data in, um, then you can have all these templates kind of at your fingertips and, and ready to go with all of that um, from there. Um, so, you know, the, the basic point was, you know, the, the Spotfire connector, it does enable kind of direct connection to your instance of Transmart. The one thing I didn't show there with the connection was um, the authentication. So it does ask you to to authenticate against the server and log into the server when you, when you need to do that. Um, it provides the workflow for, for using all of that data within Transmart. 
It leverages the RESTful API, and it provides the user with kind of access to the analytics in Spotfire um, with all the data you have in Transmart. And the other thing to think about with, with uh, Spotfire as well is, you know, most people think about it as just a visualization tool, but it does have, it does leverage an R backend as well. So anything you can run as far as an R script, uh, you can run that within Spotfire and create those types of visualizations using those scripts um, that you've got with R. So I think I went through that kind of fast, but I think that's all I had. So are there any questions?